Done. Hey guys, Renee and Casey here with Bargain Hunters Thrift Store, and I'm so excited to tell you, guess whose storage unit we bought? Farrah Fawcett. Farrah Fawcett. Oh, you looked at me like you wanted me to say no, it. No, I was going to say it. We bought Farrah Fawcett storage unit. But why did you look at me like you was like... Because I was making it dun 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 dun. Dun 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 dun. Now you're supposed to do the sound effects too. It's like, what a budget you need to do camera work and sound effects. <laughs> She's like, what? Wee, wee, wee. That was awkward. Go. Okay, guys, so let me give you the backstory. But before we start on the Farrah Fawcett stuff, I just want to say something. We got a whole bunch of hate for the Lamar Odom. Just for a few people say, oh, you should just give it back to the guy for free. And uh, you shouldn't have bought the storage unit. Do you think if I say, you know what, I'm not going to buy it because it's Lamar Odom, somebody else is not going to buy yeah, it? Yeah, of course. Somebody else is going to buy it. There's 100 people online buying it, but I bet the most, okay? And that's how it works. Number two... You, it's okay for me to keep something for somebody that just works hard but let a storage unit go or something happened with them. But somebody that made like $100 million in the NBA, I should just give it back for free because they spent $100 million? Again, common sense. You know, I got a few phone calls where people were like, uh, we're talking all ghetto and making racist remarks and they're going to get me. Bring it. I carry a gun like 90% of the time. So it's like, I ain't scared. doesn't matter. I got Jesus in my heart. He's going to protect me. And if you have to call me from a private number and talk some trash like that, not even face me. But you know what? We actually gave Lamar an opportunity to buy it back. Didn't work out. You know, it takes money. So most of the time we buy lockers, like if we buy single mom's lockers or military lockers or lockers that are just any person's Stuff, we give them the pictures back for free. We give them the personal belongings for free. <laughs> Bless you. Excuse me. <laughs> we don't give them back the collectibles because that's how we make our money. We don't give back stuff that is value. Now, we always give an opportunity if they contact us to buy, uh, to give it back to them. But, you know, we've done that many times. And 95% of the time, the people never come up with the money. And or it just... it's a huge headache. They're calling at like 2 in the morning. Yeah, and I was, crazy. every time I tried to do a favor for somebody, I bought lockers back for people four times when they were in the audience. And every time it turned into a huge nightmare where I had to regulate. You know, when I finally told the people, that's it. You know, so it's, you guys talk like that because you don't know what the hell you're talking about. And when he says audience, he doesn't mean the television show. He just means the people that are at regular auctions. Yeah. In the, other than television. Yeah, so, um. So, and usually when somebody shows up at the auction and they have the money to bid, I don't bid against them anyway, because they do want the stuff back. Most of the time, people don't even want the stuff back. We've contacted people, um, shipped stuff to them, then they never paid us shipping. Then we say, okay, we ship, but we're going to ship and collect, and they don't want us to ship. I mean, it's a lot of problems. People lose stuff for a reason, usually. Most of the time, it's drug-related. That's why we say don't do drugs. Yeah, so, and sometimes divorces, sometimes people just don't care, death insurance, stuff like this. But, and another thing, people always say, oh, you guys are scumbag because you buy storage units. Well, if I use my credit card, they charge me 25% interest. That's scummy. If I don't pay the government on a bill, they charge me 100% interest. <laughs> That's scummy. If I don't pay my car bill, they repossess it. That's scummy. If I don't pay my rent in my store or my house, they kick me in the street. That's scummy. When I go buy a steak at Chris Ruth, they charge me $200 for a piece of meat. I think it's called Ruth Chris. Ruth Chris is probably only 100 bucks, <laughs> But they charge me 100 bucks for a piece of meat I can get at, at Albertsons for like 20 bucks. And then Okay, they... we just had one the other night. It was really good. Yeah. It was worth it. And we only do that like once a year, so I don't think we're living the high life. And then they want me to tip 20% on top of it, okay? So that's like everything in life, they charge something. When I go see my doctor... It's like 300 bucks an hour. So if I've had a little ear surgery, that was like $5,000. I go see my lawyer, it's 350 bucks an hour. And even... And it's $120 for him to email Renee to say, there's no, no news. Yeah, so like everything <laughs> is charged in life. If you guys think people don't charge you in life, you must be broke because everything you do in life, you charge. I send in my comics to get graded. It's a regular comic for them to create it, put a slap on there and press. It's $180 for a good comic. That's what it is. And it gets higher. It, if the better comics, they get even higher. I think the cheapest pressing and slabbing is uh, probably 70 bucks. But yeah. that comic is worth com less than 200 Yeah, and if your comic's worth $10,000, they're going to charge you a percentage because they want... 1.5%. But yeah. it's worth it because it increases the value. But everything in life, they charge you. And we're here to make money. So that's just something I wanted to get off my chest. I was going to do a separate video. Better? I always feel good, but it's like, you know, I really don't care what people say at the end of the day because it doesn't matter. But it's like, and most people actually were positive, but you always get these few idiots and you can tell they don't have no money, have no knowledge about life. Stuff costs. I send my daughter to a Christian private school and the reason we do that, because, sorry. 
It agrees with our values. Oh, sneeze. What's next? It agrees with our values. We like the curriculum. But you know what? They don't do it for free because I'm Christian. They don't say, hey, Renee, you know what, fellow Christian? Don't worry about it. We'll do this for free for you. <laughs> they say it's 1200 a month to you, Renee. And guess what? It goes up 5% every year. You know? So everything in life costs money. I get Netflix, costs money. I get HBO, costs money. I watch the NFL, costs money. Everything is money. There's nothing for free in life. Go to the Salvation Army soup kitchen. And guess what? That's still a corporation that kitchen. people make money to. Kitchen. Kitchen. So, speak. But anyway, Farrah Fawcett. We bought Farrah Fawcett's locket before all the haters start. This locket was in storage down here in San Diego for about um, six, seven years. Mm -hmm. Then when Farrah Fawcett passed away... Wait one moment. It's not... Okay, so we took a quick break, so I'm going to try to continue where we were. Um, so this was in storage for six years. When she passed away, she had three 10 by 20s or 10 by 30s. I don't exactly remember because I actually bought this two years ago. Um, when she passed away, her lawyers came in, the family, they, they took a whole bunch of wardrobe, they took the driver's license, they took paperwork, they took all kinds of movie memorabilia, I think the bathing suit might have even been in there, really? the famous one, put, I don't know if she sold it before or if it came after she passed away, I mean, why I get would confused. she sell her bathing suit, I don't even Cause, know, because there's that. a really famous post that she did when she was young in a bathing suit, you know, full with the red, it's like one of the highest selling posters, if not the highest selling posts of all time. So all the lawyers and the family, they came in and they took everything. Um, there was, and it ended up being sold through Heritage Auction. You can actually Google that. You'll see some of her auction results. Then they just dumped it on the storage unit and said, hey, we're not paying anymore. You guys clean it up, which is always what they do. So again, the storage facility did them a favor because that lawyer is involved. And there's a lot of money owned in the units. They let them in. They took all the good stuff and they left three units worth of trash in there. Now, at the time, we didn't notice. This whole episode we actually filmed for Storage Wars. There's a Storage Wars episode out there, which is the Farrah Fawcett special. Yeah, with, can I say? No, don't say who's in there, because we don't want to give too much away in case they do want to air it and also I don't okay. know how they want to edit it out. But we had the buyers of it. Uh, there's some other stuff involved where they didn't, they didn't want to do it. And there's a special guest on there. We'll just leave it at that. Yeah, so there's a special guest on there, but we don't know if that's eventually going to go through. Now... I tell you guys all the time, know where you buy. And when we put the thing together, I didn't realize this whole thing was located at a facility where I normally don't go to because the manager is not on the up and up. Uh, you know, many times I've seen him cancel auctions when the bids weren't high enough or, you know, it's just really hard to work with. If he doesn't think you pay enough, he gives you six hours to clean out. There's really? Been, yeah, it's been rumors that he went through units and stuff like this. So I, I usually just don't go there. And I didn't realize at the time that was the facility. Um, when we heard about this, you know, the auctioneer called me. He's like, hey, Renee, just so you know, Farrah Fawcett's units, three huge units. According to the manager, they're packed with boxes and packed with stuff. It wasn't so, packed. Yeah, it wasn't. So we call, of course, we call out people over at Original Productions, uh, Bumgarner, Ernie Avila. Uh, I think at the time, Jeff Fry might have been there. Roman was involved. There's a bunch of people involved over at Original Productions. But they said right away, hey, yeah, we want to do an episode. Let's do this. Let's do a special on it. And Amy was excited about it, too. When we got there, all three units were left over. They were gone through. They took stuff out. Yeah, it was a death point. It, it wasn't what we wanted. It wasn't this mega explosion unit. Yeah, but we still found some stuff. Excited. So we actually pulled out a lot of furniture where she had FF uh, carved in all the furniture for Farrah Fawcett. We had chandeliers. We had a really cool butcher block that somebody bought. We butcher had block. a butcher block here. Yeah. We had a lot of clothes from our kids uh, that was all inscribed, monogrammed, right? Oh, yeah. And then um, we also found two boxes left of wardrobe, some movie worn wardrobe, um, which is probably going to go to Golden Auction. So that's why we do this video kind of last minute rush because they come in tomorrow to pick up all the Lamar Odom stuff. But um, the episode, there just wasn't enough bang in there. And at a time we were in between seasons with Storage Wars, as a long rest, and they just decided not to do the episode. Now, that doesn't mean that one day at a special DVD set you'll see, like, a special Storage Wars for a faucet unit. Um, as of right now, no, but doesn't mean it'll never air. But it, it's really cool. It's, it's awesome. I still try to get him to do it um, because I think it's pretty cool. So a lot of the stuff we had was average stuff. I still have a few things from her put aside. I don't know where I have it right now. But to me, I, I have just so much stuff, you know. I mean, I'm still working Famous on... Famous last words. I, I haven't even done 5% from the Hoarder House with the comic book locker, so... You haven't even like done 5% of the Hoarder House from a year and a half ago, the Indian store. Yeah, no, we did more than 5 We did like 30% of that. 
But you know what, that's the business. You constantly buy and then you keep on turning. You always have merchandise. So we're gonna show you some of the stuff we got out of it. Um, couple movie one pieces right away that we know. And uh, it's kind of cool. So it's Farrah Fawcett stuff, but like that's I said, exciting. the lawyers went through. And then um, there was so much big furniture and I'm actually gonna, this is the first time I dumped units. I, I never dumped units on managers or anything like this, but because that place was already crooked and um, so monkey they, see, monkey do. They totally hyped it up, and then we we at first you could see it was gone through, but we didn't we didn't know at the time for sure. So we overpaid, like we paid for two units, like thirty five hundred dollars, and they looked really rough. They weren't thirty five hundred dollar units. Each and, total. Oh, total. The one was six hundred, and one was twenty nine hundred. Oh, it might have been actually more. It might have been thirty five and six. I don't remember, but something like that. And you know, before they told us everything is great, nobody touched it. It's been here for years. They were holding it. Afterwards, I talked to the assistant manager, and she's like, "Yeah, the, the lawyers went through the family. They got everything they wanted. They must have missed this wardrobe because they took all the other wardrobe, and they basically dumped it on them." So I was really pissed because the manager lied to us. I'll never buy at that facility again. And I called the auctioneer up too, and I'm like, "Hey, you know, I've never dumped a unit. I've never dumped a unit on Dan. This was another. This was a different auctioneer." And I have a good reputation with him, but I'm like, hey, just out of respect, I want to give you a heads up. There's like these huge kitchen things, you know, it would have probably cost me thousand dollars just to clean it out. They put it all the way in the back and it kind of hit it. And I didn't even think that came from her. So it could be, maybe, but I don't know. But uh, I told him, I'm like, I'm not going to clean this out. I'm just, I'm going to lose my $200 cleaning deposit and I'm going to dump these units. And I'm going to give you a heads up out of respect. I don't want to be kicked out of your auctions, but, you know, and I told him the whole situation. And he said, yeah, he totally understands. And uh, I just won't be able to go to that place, which is cool because they're corrupt anyway. So didn't want to go to the place. It's the only time ever in my business that I dumped the unit. I'll probably never do that again because I f even though I was kind of totally screwed on that, I felt shitty about dumping it. So, but we had enough stuff to get our money back and we got this wardrobe for free. It's going to go to golden auctions. I don't know if it will bring $500 or $10,000. Farrah Fawcett, obviously a huge movie star. Yeah. So let's see. Let's see some stuff? Okay. Yeah. I've right. never heard of them. Farrah Fawcett, she was... Before your time. I mean, what was she, 60s? 70s? 80s? I you don't know. know if she was that old. A lot of drug problems. Again, another person, don't do drugs, you know, but she passed away from a sickness. So right here, this is a code, and it has it written on the inside, see you in the morning. I really look for pictures. Oh, so that's from the movie? Yeah, so sometimes in the movies, they will write it in there to see where it came from, um... And some of the stuff we just have to picture match. But I did find this in a, in a picture actually for See You in the Morning on a lobby card. So this was Movie Worn by Farrah Fawcett. See You in the Morning. It was like 1980. It's actually a few pieces from See You in the Morning. Sounds pretty old. 1980? That's a long time ago. Um, I thought this had a tag in it, but I don't see it. Okay, I don't see a tag on this one. Uh, and sometimes they're hidden, so you gotta look like to hide them in inconspicuous spaces. Inconspicuous. Inconspicuous. So, but that's a jacket, fair faucet. Yeah. He it's me. reversible. Huh? No. So, we've got to see if that was worn in some movie or not. So, basically, what Golden does, they will take all this stuff and they will just try to photo match it. Then, this right here is uh, See You in the Morning. You don't got to do any more zoom ups on those. Basically, if we say it, so it's just written on the label. Also, movie worn. Then, this, this is a disco suit. Disco suit? Yeah, so she was big into the 70s. This is like a onesie. And then you button it up, I think. So it's a skirt. It's and a jacket. It's a jacket? I think it's a suit. Oh, you know, I'm thinking of the next piece, maybe. I don't know. This is like a one it's piece. It's a jacket. It's a jacket? It's a jacket, honey. But it's totally groovy, 70. Made by Crizia in Italy. It's really badass. <coughs> now, if you guys see any of these pieces and you're Farrah Fawcett fans, and you know this was worn in a movie... I would love you if you guys leave us a message, give us some feedback, become part of Team Bargain Hunters, be like, hey, Renee, check this movie. It looks like she wore this. Because actually, I had a big cardboard where everything was written down on the outside of the boxes. And I don't know where to put that either right now in this last minute. So, yeah, not the most organized. But we actually saved this stuff for two years because we didn't want to release it until the storage was special. But it just doesn't look like it's going to happen now. This one's cool. Yeah, this is cool, too. It doesn't have anything written on. But some kind of fur. I would wear it. You would wear? Yeah, I'd wear it too. It's pretty cool. Well, I'm gonna be honest, I wouldn't wear it. Take us to Las Vegas, yes, baby. <laughs> that would be kind of awkward like if you wore it. Here's another jacket. Doctor suit. Doctor no, this is leather. Just, and same thing, that. it's a Crezia made in Italy. Super soft. Yeah. It's nothing written on, so. 
They're not stylish. I so would so think like a doctor or a scientist would wear that. <laughs> it's lettuce. That was the style in the 80s, man. So this is just Pendleton jacket. In the back it has some kind of something native bird. I don't know. So this is just some of our wardrobe stuff. Now this is uh, a also judge. Italy. Oh, never mind. Are you putting like stuff on everything? I think I remember her being photographed from the paparazzi wearing something like this with jeans and a white shirt. You know, that kind of looks like the little uh, coat that I had to wear in uh, Biztown because I was the judge. Yeah. yeah, it's different. That's just a little... That's the judge. A nightgown. Here is, this is a matching pair. It's also Chrissy. It's made in Italy. I think Snow White would wear that. It actually has tags on it. Made in Italy. It's a nightgown. It's a nightgown? Okay. It's really pretty. Snow White would wear it, probably. Now, we actually bought a lot of celebrity lockers. I probably bought five, at least five celebrity lockers I can think of top of my head. So this stuff happens more often. Maybe I'll share some stories. There's just a rope. Look at that. Another dress. Glorious. Wow. But what's cool about this, all these pieces were worn by Farrah Fawcett. And if you look at, you know, clothes that are worn by celebrities, they go pretty high. You know, Marilyn Monroe, which is probably the same level, different decades. Uh, Marilyn Monroe might be a little bit bigger, but I guess it's when you grew up. And then the movie worn pieces are good. This jacket right here is awesome. Oh, that's cool. That I wear it. Friendstone. Yeah, at least And there's like tags it. in here, but I can't read it anymore. Oh, so it's written on. It's what all custom made, it? I think. I think those are sizes made in, or made in France. Oh. Mommy, do you think Aunt Lisa would wear that? Maybe. <laughs> well, that's cool. I mean, the age, that was a super stylish jacket. That's pretty. What is this? Blind suit made in France. This, what kind of material is this? Polyester? Expensive. Expensive? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, no, polyester is that wooly stuff, right? Polyester is like you get at Walmart. <laughs> that would be something that like graduation people would wear. This is just, yeah, this is nothing. Now, this one is right here. It's, it says on the inside, and maybe we gotta see, maybe there's some more, open up some buttons. Female it says detective. Mar Margaret Burke White, and then Russia. Russia. So I don't know if that's from a movie. Or if it's some kind of designer. I don't know. Like, Farrah Foss has been in hundreds of movies, so. I don't know. It's probably from a movie, because why would somebody write on it? Usually handwritten. Yeah, because it's handwritten. So, I have to Google this. Ma Margaret Burke White, Russia. Huh. Oh, made us a movie. Mar Margaret Burke and then White Russia? Who's Margaret Burke? Is she an actor? I don't know. Maybe this is from somebody else. It's not. It's just a rope. That's just a rope. That's nothing, actually. Uh, hotel... Pelagio, I think. No, but no, that's actually probably trash. It's not going anywhere. Now, this is something that's kind of cool. Just because it's from the ESPYs. I'm assuming ESPY Awards, or is there something called the ESPY? Or it's a weird TV show. Oh, maybe she went to the awards, and then they give you rubs when you're getting your hair and makeup done. Well, maybe. Well, she definitely was at the ESPY Awards, so, because I Googled that. Oh, wow. So, Maybe you get a robe to get ready in while they're doing your hair and makeup. Sure, heavy and comfortable for a robe. Wow. Mommy's like, teach me more. Yeah, <laughs> it's super luxurious. Casey will go anywhere where they throw in free makeup in her. Why not? We were in Mexico City and I put up some videos and we had all custom makeup people and stuff. She was in heaven. I never heaven. had anything like that. <laughs> I'll do your makeup. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Tatiana. So there's a coat. This doesn't really say anything. And a couple of her leather coats, I think, are brand new. Yeah, this is another coat with a bunch of stuff written in. So this is Joy. It's just brand new. I think it's just a brand new coat. It's nice. Talia. Is anything written? <laughs> Nothing I can see. Italian. Suede. See, that looks like, that can't be regular stuff. That looks like almost like a movie thing, right? Yeah, yeah. it does. Something, it's like, it looks like all hand sewn. Yeah, because look at how this is. It's like sock, uh, sackcloth, is that how you say it? Yeah, it's weird. That's something like I would see like in a, like a doomsday movie or some survivor movie. Yeah, that's interesting. So yeah, we just have to do more research, but Golden Auctions has like a whole team and kind of comes part of the deal, so that'll oh, research cool. it. Well, check it out, bummer, best. Charlie Chavignon, old flight jacket. 
That's just a real issue though. Turn it around. Kind of cool. Yeah. So the next one has something weird written into it. Okay, let's save that for last because okay. then this is just regular. The Fairmont Bam Springs Imitational. It looks beautiful. It's I mean, like... that's actually more interesting because what does this say? Gant USA. What's Gant? Fairmont. This is some kind of shirt. Gant, I don't know. It says stuff on the back. Oh, no, USA 1949. I don't know, it's probably some kind of golf tournament or something. And last um, but not least. So this says compliments of L&D, which who knows what that is. Then there's a whole bunch of other stuff right now. So that might be a production. 11 4 99 through 12 19 of 99. That looks like something that Indiana Jones would wear. Baby. Baby number 61. Yeah, Sally number 4. So if you guys know what this means... Baby number 61, Sally number 4. What does that say, Stuart or Surratt? Yeah, baby number 61 again. It says baby 61 here, but... Oh, oh Stuart or Stunt? Stunt? It says Stunt or Stuart. So this must be a movie one piece too. If you guys know what that means, baby 61, Sally number 4, and then 11, 4, 99 through 12, 19, So I'm assuming that's when they filmed it, or maybe that's when they were shooting with this. So. Or it's characters. Like, there's more than one Sally, like, if it's like a twin thingy, I guess? Uh, it could be, uh... I mean, they, they use different outfits for different stunts, and then it's padded really thick. Yeah. Or it doesn't seem like a regular jacket padding. Yeah, I don't it's know. definitely not a regular jacket padding. Women's jackets are like that. So I have to Google some of that stuff, but... That's the stuff we got out of Farrah Fawcett. So like I said, you know, that locker we spend, like... I'm going to say around $4,000 plus work, plus time, plus storage. And, you know, we're still stuck on it, but that's fine. So the best part is when we had all the furniture in the store, is people would look at it and they're like, oh, I'm kind of interested. And he'd say, it's Vera Fawcett. And then they would, like, take another look and they'd be like, wow, it looks good. It was such a great selling point. People would be like, I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> that was Farrah Fawcett's table. That was Farrah Fawcett's couch. Yeah, so there was some cool stuff out of there. And, you know, then I'm going to say something else for people. Because like, people always say, oh, you should just give it back to the person. You know, actually one time on the swap meet, I'll tell you guys another quick story. I had this lady come to the swap meet and she was like, you got family pictures from the people. I'm like, yes, I get like, uh, you know, we buy 10 units a week. We try to give it back to the management. If the management doesn't take it because the people don't contact them, then it ends up here and it eventually goes in the trash. And she goes like, well, you guys are jerk. You should be finding those people and sending it to them. And I'm like, you know what? You're absolutely right. And she looked at me. She's like, oh, okay, great. And I'm like, from now on, what I'm going to do, I'm going to have my guy separate it. Yeah, don't gonna piss off Renee because he's a big smarty pants. No, smarty pants, a fact. It was a, it was a valid offer. And uh, I'm going to separate it. We're going to put it in boxes for you, write down the unit numbers and whatever we know. And um, you can come once a week and pick up the boxes. We'll give them to you. Then you can send it to them, uh, do the research. I can probably provide you with five to 10 boxes a week, you know, good sized boxes. So that probably can be your full-time job, just sending family pictures back to people. It's not my responsibility if people let it go. If we can't leave it with the management, we will. Most of the time management doesn't want to take it because the people are either not in contact, a pain in the butt or problems like this. So, you know, people always say stuff. Same thing with like the Lamar Odom locker. You guys really want to give it all back to Lamar Odom for free? Great, I'm probably into it. I don't know, a lot. You know, at least 30, 40 grand by the time it's all said and done. Um, if you guys want to do a GoFundMe page, we'll raise $50,000. Everybody who says that contributes $1,000, it's only 50 people. I'll take the 50 grand, got my money back, made 10 grand, and we'll just give it all to Lamar for free. But see, nobody does, because what happens, especially in YouTube and with social media, people are really easy at spending other people's money. They say, well, you should do this, you should do this, you should do this. But they don't want to contribute anything. They just want me to take the loss. This is what I do for a living. It's just another job like anything else. Um, and that's how we make our money. And if something is collectible, we're going to sell it, you know? Yeah, and it's, we love to share with you all the collectibles and, and the cool and, finds that yeah, we get. Every celebrity locker we found, every big locker, if there was an opportunity, we always give the people a chance. We communicate with them to buy it back. Like I said, most of the time it's like, oh, I got the money in six months. I got the money in eight months. You know, can you hold it for me? Then or hold it for two weeks. And then we hold it for two weeks. And then they're like, another two weeks. And then they start calling at two in the morning, harassing us. One of my best friends, Mark Converse, so he does the same thing as we does. And he bought this huge units. Yeah, and, and he it, was on an episode of Storage Yeah, he did an also. episode of Storage Wars too. And he um, he actually bought this locker. And this lady was in Brazil. And he like killed it. There was so much clothes in there. And he probably already made like 10, 15 grand. But there was another 
big unit that she wanted to buy back. It was all personal stuff, sewing equipment. And he was like, okay, you know, I make good money. I'm going to do you a favor. So she said, just put it in storage. I get the money in a month. So he put in a unit that cost 500 a month. He wow. paid in that unit for a year. <gasps> and he only got like maybe two or 3000 in small payments because every time there was an excuse, every, every day the sky was falling. And oh, eventually yeah. the lady didn't come through and he told us, like, that said 60 days and I'm done. And um, it's like, if you give me at least the money I spent on storage, then I'll hold it for another 90 days as long as you pay. She said, she told him basically to go F off and that he's the devil and never came up with money. And he lost like five grand on the deal. Wow. And he has, he's a family of four with four kids. Yeah. He's, he's very successful. He's a smart dude. But still, like whenever we do something nice in this business, it almost always backfires. And if you think because we don't buy it, that it doesn't get sold, it gets sold. Yeah. Trust me. Somebody else is going to be right behind us trying to buy yeah. it. Yeah. These facilities, they need the units empty so they can rent them to paying customers. If the facilities have units full of people that don't pay, they cannot pay their mortgages, they cannot pay their employees, they go to business. It's a cycle of business. That's how it works. If you don't pay your bill, the stuff gets gone. And trust me, if your stuff is so crappy where none of us buy it, it's not like the facility says, oh, call the people or maybe somebody cleans out. They'll call the dump truck and clean, and clean it out and take it all to the dump. So, you know, that's how life works. I'm sorry, guys. That's just how it is. I'm just a small fish living in a big system i guess <laughs> but hey farrah fawcett units it was really cool if you want to hear more stuff like that if you want to hear more celebrity stories of stuff that we bought uh storage was is coming back i heard october 10th so we have a whole season coming out which will be fun october not august i thought it was august okay. they switched to october 10th and then now i heard rumor it might not come back till january but the last thing officially i heard from my producer it's October 10th, so I'm going to go with that. Okay, let's go with October 10th, because I've been telling everybody in the store, oh, in August, mid-August. <laughs> no, that's what originally, but it's October 10th, so that's the last I heard. Oh, exciting, so season 12, yeah. whole bunch more store drawers just around the corner. So you guys make sure to subscribe, like the video. We're also working on a project, which we're almost ready to start working on because of our contractual issues, but we might do our own show. If you guys want to see us have our own show, make sure to leave it in the comments. And yeah, yeah, we'll see you there. Exciting stuff. Always in the works. God bless you. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. What she said. <laughs>